Module 3, Segment 1, Creating Companies. In this module, you will learn how to add a company record. You will review the layout of the company management window, and you will configure the company management history browses. Please note that this training segment assumes that you have already completed Module 1, System Setup. We will begin by learning how to add a new company. This company could be either a customer, a vendor, or both. Go to the drop-down menu in the Company Management module and select Add. The Adding New Company window opens. You will see that there are three fields labeled in red. Name, Abbreviation, and code. These are the required fields for a company management record. Type the name of the company in the name field. As with all other text fields in quantum control, this field can be completed with either all uppercase letters or with a combination of upper and lowercase letters. Please remember that the text in these fields will be reproduced on the printed forms exactly as you type it here. After you type in the name of the company, use your Enter or Tab key to navigate your cursor to the abbreviation field. You will remember from the Module 1, Segment 3, System Settings, that you are able to assign whether company codes are computer generated or entered manually. In our example, alphanumeric codes are automatically generated. If you look at the code field, you will see that an alphanumeric value has been inserted based on the company's name. This code value will be available as a search option throughout quantum control. The abbreviation field is required and must be completed by the user. It is provided for those companies that have more than one reference value they use when identifying customers and vendors. For example, one used by the sales department and another by the accounting department. If you do not have a need for multiple reference numbers, it is recommended that you repeat the code value in the abbreviation field. All other fields within the company management record are optional and should be used based on your own company's requirements. We will now review some of the most frequently used fields in the company management record. For a detailed explanation of all fields in the screen, please refer to Online Help Chapter 3. The Attention field contains the name of your primary contact at this company. The name typed into this field will print as a default on all orders generated. You will see in the next training segment how to record additional contact names that can also be attached to orders. Type the name of the primary contact in the Attention field. The Terms field stores the payment terms that will be used as a default when you are quoting or selling to a customer. This can be overridden as needed. The Terms field is table-driven. If the company you are creating will be a customer, open the table to make a selection from the options provided. The Browsing Term Codes window opens. You may double-click on a term to select it, or you can select the Add Action button to create a new term. If you select the Add Action button, the Adding Terms code window opens. Type the new term as you would like to see it displayed on forms in the code field. In the description field, type an explanation of the term. 
This field is for internal use only and can be a repetition of the code field if no further explanation is required. Select OK. You will be returned to the Browsing Term Codes window. Double click to select the term. You will be returned to the Company Management window, where you will see your term inserted. The Vendor Terms field stores default payment terms that are used when buying or receiving pricing from a vendor. You will see that the same terms table is used for both customers and vendors. If the company you are creating will be a vendor, open the table and double click on a term to make a selection. If the term you wish to use is not listed, you may add it to the table as explained before. There are several user defined fields in this window. For an explanation on how to assign their values, please review Module 1, Segment 3, System Settings. Type the primary telephone, fax number, and email address for the company. A default shipping method can be assigned to this company in the Table Driven VIA field. Make your selection from the table or add a new selection if needed. Address information will be recorded on these two tabs. On the Office Address tab, Type the bill to or remit information for this company. On the warehouse address tab, type the ship to information. Please note that once you have typed in the office address and have moved your cursor to the warehouse address, you may use the enter key on your keyboard to be prompted to copy the information from one tab to the other. If the two addresses are similar or the same, select Yes. You may then edit the warehouse address as needed. Insert additional information as required and select OK. The completed company management record will open. At the top of the window, you will see a summary of the company information you have just entered. To see the detail of all the information, select the View Action button. The Viewing Company window will open. Changes cannot be made in this window. When you have finished reviewing the company detail, select OK. To make changes to the information you have entered, select the Edit Action button. Update the record as needed and select OK. The bottom portion of the company management window is where history for the company will be displayed. These history panels can be customized using the same method learned in the inventory management training. To change the history panels, Right-click and select Configure Browses. The Configure Company Browses window opens. You will first be able to add tabs and define the number of rows and columns in the history display. If you change the number of tabs, rows, and or columns, you will select the Rebuild button to apply these changes. You are then ready to assign the history to the additional grid locations. Simply locate a history display that you wish to include from the top of the window and drag and drop it into one of the grid areas on the bottom of the window. Please note that you cannot leave a grid unassigned as shown here. You must either assign a history or delete the extra grid. Select OK to save the changes. When we return to the company management record, 
you will see that we now have history displayed. To recap what we have learned in this module, we have created a new company. We have reviewed the layout of the company management record. And we have configured the company management history displays. You may now proceed to Module 3, Segment 2, Functions in Company Management.